All right, y'all, we give praise, esteem, and honor to the living Elohim in the name of Yahoo Shah Hamashiach this day. Pick this up in John chapter 5, verse 39. Uh, search the scriptures for any you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify me. And you would not come to me that you might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you, that you have not the love of Elohim in you. If I come in my Abba's name, you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. How can you believe which receive honor one from another and not the honor that comes from Allah and only? Do not think that I will accuse you to Abba. There is one that accused you, even Moses, in whom you trust. Had you believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. You would have believed not his writings. How should you believe my words? Praise be to Yahuwah. Hold on, y'all. You know, we bless this Kadesh Shabbat. Appreciate him allowing us to see another one. Let's go on over here to Psalms 137. Oh, yeah, we got a book over die to finish up, but we also need to get back to the key point in our thesis. Psalms 137 and 1. While the rivers of Babylon there, we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hanged our harps upon the willows. In the midst thereof, for they that carried us away captive required of us a song, and they that wasted us mirth sing us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing you a song in a strange land? If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget if I do not remember you, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. If I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy, remember, O Yahuwah, the sons of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof, O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed. Happy that rewards you as you have served us. Happy that take and dash your little ones against the stones. You know, we kind of talked about that one with Babylon being destroyed on the latter end a little bit like we. But of course, you know, we got more to delve. But we're talking about Edom. Well, Edom wants to make you naked. Let me get Jeremiah 49 out the way for you right now. Come on, Jeremiah 49. Let's go ahead and do that. Because we in the book of Obadiah. And I said Wednesday that we would do get Edom out of here. Let's get Edom on out of here. Jeremiah 49 and 7 is where we'll pick this up. Dealing strictly with Edom. We we'll get straight to the point and make it do what it do. Some of y'all remember this, some of you may not, but praise be to Yahuwah either way. Concerning Edom, thus saith Yahuwah of hosts, is wisdom no more in T man. Its counsel perish from the prudent, is their wisdom banished. So, of course, we're talking about Edom. We just want to talk about, of course, prudent is. Bene, which is understanding. And he wants to know if that kokma is vanished. That one is Sirach. And that is to go free, unrestrained, to loose or be dismissed or gone. It's wisdom gone. This is the next thing he say. Flee, and you could get you the book of Obadiah and have it on deck. Flee you, turn back, dwell deep, O inhabitants of Dedan, for I will bring the calamity of Esau upon him the time I will visit him. If the grape gatherers come to you, will they not leave gleaning grapes? If these by night, they will destroy till they have enough. Now, we already read this verse in the book of Obadiah, did we not? Let's come back to the book of Obadiah so you can see that. Again, two prophets asking the same question of the same people. Now, of course, now we're not looking at this at face value. So if you want to look at it in the natural and, and heart and, 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 and go in and in and on and on about that, well, I can't do nothing about you in that regard because I will not entertain such things at this particular moment in time. We're dealing with what we're dealing with, and that's the witness of the son of the living Elohim at this particular juncture. And the things that, that pertain to that, because we're talking about his genealogy and, of course, how this is the Judah 
whom he chose and the Mount Zion, which he loved and how he allowed his strength to go into captivity and to be overthrown. Shalom, brother runners, as regards to what Psalm 78 has uh, instructed us on, of which we spend an ample amount of time discussing. So we come back over here, man. Book of Obadiah, right here in verse five. I think we got down quite a bit. And I know we had some in Lamentation shot before in this regard. And we will revisit that if you who allows as well. So Obadiah, verse five. If these came to you with robbers by night, how are you cut off? Would they not have stolen till they had enough? If the great brothers came unto you, would they not leave grapes? How are of Esau searched out? Are his hidden things sought up? Now look at what it says right after here in verse 10 of Jeremiah 49. He said, I have made Esau bare. I have uncovered his secret places. He shall not be able to hide himself. His seed is spoiled, his brethren and his neighbors, and he not. So let's talk about this. Esau is bare. Bear again is kasak, that is to strip off, to lay bare, to draw out, to strip off, to make naked, to discover. The ruddy man is made bare. Mm. Now pause and think about that. Pause and think about that. Now, of course, Esau means hairy. And of course, Edom means ruddy. So I want y'all to sit back and, and ask yourself a question as in regards to what is being stated. The hairy man has been made bare. He's uncovered his secret places. He will not be able to hide himself. It said his seed is spoiled. I'm gonna go ahead and get you spoiled here. And of course that is Shaddad, that is to deal violently to devastate, to ruin, to destroy, to violently destroy, to be devastated, to oppress, to lay waste. So we, what we have here is Harry has been laid bare or stripped or been exposed, if you would. He has been stripped off, laid bare. And he has uncovered his secret places. Let's talk about a little secret place. Secret place is Mitzar, so that's his place of protection, his hiding place. He has been uncovered from his hiding place. Uncovered is Galah, which is to remove. So again, I'm gonna piece it out and I'm gonna ask you a question. Harry has been made, has been laid or stripped out. He has uncovered his hiding place. He will not be able to hide himself. His seed is violently destroyed. His brethren, his neighbors, and he is not. Now, for not, it's just ayin, that is in, not, nothing, lack of. What do y'all think this means? What comes to your brain as you hear these things that are stated? I think it's made this seem like this was just going to be the most bitter, horrible thing in the world. It was not. It was not my long shot. Oh, Y'all ain't got to rush now. Uh, what do you hear? I have made Harry bear. Oh, I have made Harry to be stripped of or laid out. To strip off. I've made him bear. I've drawn him out. I've uncovered his protection. He will not be able to hide himself. His seed is dealt with violently. His brethren, his neighbors, and he not, or he's not lacking anything, or whatever the case may be. Does anything come to your mind with any of this? If nothing does, it's okay. I 
I'm just trying to get to see what y'all thoughts is on the matter, what comes to your mind. Yeah, I we're at 10 minutes. I give you another minute. You prompt right now, you currently have 45 seconds. And so within that time period, we'll just go from there and just deal with whatever you whatever y'all come up with. You got about 35 seconds. About 20 seconds. And let's roll. Well, we got 10 more seconds. Okay, Proverbs 22 and 6. I mean, Psalm 22, 16 and 18 about being made bare. And I can see why you would say that. But come over here to Genesis chapter 27. Pick it up at verse 11. From what I need to say, he ain't telling no lie. I got my nine more years before my body breaks down. I think it's already broken down. Yeah, yeah, because you don't stretch. Yeah, that's what you don't stretch. What? Ryan said, "Man, you need to do some yoga." Stretch it. That's all it that is. I mean, baseline. That's all it is. Stretching. You need to do some. You need to do some Pilates. No, you too. I, I don't do no, I don't do no Pilates, nigga. Genesis twenty-seven and eleven. Jacob said to Rebecca, his mother, "Behold, Esau, my brother, is a hairy man, and I, a smooth man. My father, peradventure, will fill me, and I shall seem to him a deceiver. I shall bring a curse upon me, and not a blessing." His mother said unto him, upon me, your curse, my son, only obey my voice. Go fetch me. He went and fetched and brought to his mother and his mother made savory meat as his father loved. Oh, we got one of the bots on the scene. And Rebecca took goodly raiment of her eldest son. Esau with her in the house and put them upon her younger son. Notice that it said goodly raiment. Let's take a look at goodly raiment. Mm. Yeah, because you're acting like you're a baby. We got Goodly here. We have Kim Da. That's which is desirable, that which is pleasant, that which is precious. You have Cot Dalit, excuse me, Cot Mean Dalit. And hey, so one of the first things that you're going to look at is we're going to take that cot and you're going to have some protection. And you're going to have some protection from the ruach of the sacrifice of the man with raised arms. You understand? That's why it's a pleasant. That's what makes that raiment goodly. This is what Rebecca or the, his mother, or in this regard, you would look at as the grave, has put upon Esau or the hairy one. Because Jacob would be the one that we would be looking at in this regard as the hairy one. Because Jacob in this regard would be Yahusha himself. So let's continue. And she put the skin of the kids of the goats upon his hands and upon the smooth of his neck. She gave him the savory meat and the bread which he prepared into the hand of her son Jacob. And he came unto his father and said, my father. And he said, here, I. Who are you, my son? And of course, y'all know so on and so forth. What happens from then on out? Jacob's get blessed. Now we come back to Gen I mean Jeremiah 49. We transition to this next part. He uncovered his protection. Let's turn around and let's look at a statement from the Lord. I want to say that's John chapter 18 or 19. Or what he tell Pilate. Y'all know what he's going to say. We're just going to pull it off the text. John chapter 19. And we'll pick this up about verse seven. Because you're going to clean it up. John 
John 19 and 7. Make it six. When the chief priest, therefore, and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said unto him, Take you him and crucify him. I find no fault in him. The Yahudim answered him, We have a law, and by our law he ought to die because he made himself the son of Elohim. So you ought to understand that. They, they're telling you that. If he makes himself the son of Elohim, they know that they're saying that he is Elohim. If you're the son of Elohim, that means you equal with Elohim. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid. And he went into the judgment hall and said unto Yahusha, Whence are you? Yahusha gave him no answer. Then said Pilate unto him, Speak you not unto me? Know you not that I have power to crucify you and have power to release you? Yahusha answered, You could have no power at all against me except it were given you from above. Therefore, he that delivered me unto you have the greater sin. So they understand, right? Remember what he said, he that come out against me is, or, or the son of man is to be trade into the hand of sinners. Excuse me. This is when his uh, he's uncovered his secret places or his protection. Because remember, secret places means protection, hiding place. See, let's take a look at something so you can see that in the book of Job. Just let her do it. Just let her do it. Just let her do it. If you can't get it done, get some assistance. Job 1 and 6. Now there was a day when the sons of Elohim came to present themselves before Yahuwah and ha Hashatan came also among them. This is another point we were talking about the other day. It said the sons of Elohim came to present themselves and then the adversary was among them. Not that he is the son of Elohim. And Yahuwah said unto Hashatan, whence come you? Hashatan answered Yahuwah and said from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. You who have said unto Hashatan, have you considered my servant Job, that none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that fear Elohim and eschew evil? Hashatan answered Yahuwah and said, do Job fear Elohim for nothing? Have you not made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he have on every side? You have blessed the work of his hand and his substance is increased in the land. Notice if he said he had a hedge for protection, that means he had a safety place. So well, guess what? When Yahuwah removed that, that hedge of protection off Job, that means his secret places have been uncovered or his place of protection. So when you see that with Yahusha, the minute that he ate the bread and drank the wine, his hiding place had been removed. Now he's been able to be made bare. So now when you take on the next part of this particular passage and it says, uh, boom, 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 he's not going to be able to hide himself, which you know that he did not hide himself. And then he tells you that his seed is spoiled, his brethren and his neighbors. Now, I'll give you. Mm, you're going to learn today. Of course, you know, brethren is op, that's brothers. Neighbors is Shakan. That is an inhabitant. That is a neighbor. That is a resident, a fellow citizen. Let's come over here to Matthew 11, I believe. Now, we kind of read some of this already, not Matthew 11. Matthew 11 and 11. Shoot, you could make a seven on the house. Uh, we were reading something else on Wednesday. So I'll mention that after we read this Matthew 11 and seven. Matter of fact, I'll make it four because that's just how I'm feeling. Matthew 11 and four. Yahushua answered and said unto them, go you and show again those things which you do hear and see. The blind receive their sight and the lame walk and the lepers are cleansed. The deaf hear, the dead are raised up and the poor have the good news preached to them. And Baruch. The lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear and the dead shall be raised up and the poor have the good news preached to them. Blessed is whosoever shall not be offended in me. I shall read this one more time. Blessed is whosoever shall not be offended in me. Now, for, for, for full, full disclosure, a point of what we're going to discuss with this particular passage. 
Now, we're not going to hold this to Peter's charge, but you understand when they came and got the Lord and they came to Peter, Peter was offended at him. See, let me go ahead and just do it. Let me just go and do it properly. You can hold Matthew 11 and we're coming right back, but come over here to Matthew 27. Or is it 26 that I desire? I believe it's chapter 26. Yes, Matthew chapter 26 is what I desire. I shall pick it up in verse 26. Matthew 26 and 26. And it says, and as they were eating, Yahushua took bread and broke it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink you all of it. But this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth for the fruit of this vine until the day when I drink it new with you in my Abba's kingdom. And when they had sung a, a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. Then said Yahushua unto them, all you shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered. But after I am risen, I will go before you in glee. Peter answered and said unto him, though all shall be offended because of you, will I never be offended? Yahushua said unto him, truly I say unto you that this night before the cock crow, you shall deny me thrice. Peter said unto him, though I die with you, yet I will not deny you. Likewise also said all the disciples. I didn't want you to know it just wasn't Peter. Peter the one they focus on because he was talking greasy. But they all said that they wouldn't be offended in him. And that night they were. Now, of course, it was written that they were. But see, now you got something different because now you got the information for salvation. And boy, bless those who won't be offended in him. Because see, I'm here to tell you, man, it's some niggas going to be offended. See, that stuff we were reading about Babylon and he that is yet is not and all that type of stuff. And you talking about standing up, it's going to be people going to be offended. You understand me? See, come over here to John chapter six so you can see a little bit of taste of people being offended. I didn't want you to know that. You know, you're a blessed person if you're not offended. See, I'll put it to you this way. Because I just be seeing dudes on these platforms. They be talking and, and people, first thing people scream at, well, you know, everybody ain't Christian. And, you know, people try to be political with it. See, that's why I, that's why it's not even good for me to even interject in no secular space. Because I look at it, well, everybody ain't Christian. Sounds like a personal problem to me. If you don't become one, you're going to hell. You know what I'm talking about? Because they can wonder, how you going to say your religion right? I ain't saying it right. You who would did. You know what I'm talking about? See, that's the attitude you got to have. You have to re you have to assert and let them know that I'm not saying anything. Yahuwah said it. If you don't worship Yahuwah, you worship nothing. So you're going to tell billions of people they worship nothing? I didn't tell it to them. Yahuwah did. I'm just saying what Yahuwah said. And he that despised, despised Man, uh, despising Elohim and not man because he's given us his Ruach HaKadah. So you mad with Ruach, you ain't mad with me. You know what I'm talking about? So you got a lot of people, they're not going to stand with that because they don't want to offend people. They don't want to mess up business relationships. They don't want people walk around mad with them. I'll look a nigga in the face and tell him your God is nothing. I'll tell a Buddhist that. I'll tell a Muslim that. I'll tell a nigga around the corner that. I don't give a damn what you worship because you don't worship nothing. Nigga, screw you and everything you stand for. Because we stand for the lamb, nigga. What do you mean? You don't believe in nothing. And you want me to assuage your feelings. I don't care about your feelings. Boy, we riding with Yahuwah, boy. You can't never back off the word of Yahuwah. For nobody. Bump they feelings. And see, that's why a lot of niggas going to go to hell. Because you're going to get offended to spare niggas' feelings. You're going to get offended. You're going to get offended because you don't want to die. You don't get offended because you don't want to get cut off. That man say blessed is you when all men shall speak evil of you falsely and separate themselves from your country. He say so have they likewise done the prophets and your name written in heaven. See, nigga don't see that because you don't believe it because you niggas still want to be friends with people. I don't need no friends as long as I got the lamb, nigga. I don't need no friends as long as I got the lamb, boy. And I don't. I wouldn't need not a person on the earth as long as I got you. But if you ain't got you, then shoot. I don't care about nothing else. I ain't got nothing. It ain't even life. Ain't even worth living. You know what I'm saying? That if you ain't got to that point where you don't understand that if you don't have you, who like that means what are you alive for? You know what I'm saying? That means you're destined for hell. You're destined for death. That's not an existence. I would I would want to go ahead and just expedite the process. 
Because there would be no reason. Why do I keep telling you that, man? That's why people get high. That's why people kill themselves. Because where, there is, where, where Yahuwah isn't at, there's no life. That's why people forget hopeless and why, why live. Because there is no life with, without the, with the absence of Elohim. And that's why he say we are not as others who have no hope. That means you ain't supposed to be walking around here looking sad, screwed up, looking stupid all in the face, man. Nigga be looking stupid in the face because your faith ain't where it need to be. Or you're sorry. Or a combination of the two. John chapter 6. I pick it up at verse 55 on the house. John 6 and 55. I make it 54. Whoso eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Well, shoot, 53. Then said Yahushua unto them, truly, truly, I say unto you, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. See, that's why even though them boy was offended in him, it was okay, because they had ate his flesh and drank his blood, so they had life in them. Whoso eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eat my flesh and drink my blood dwell in me and I in him. And as the living Abba have sent me and I live by Abba, so he that eat me even shall live by me. That this is that bread which came down from Shamahim, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eat it is bread shall live forever. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many therefore of his disciples when they heard said this is a hard saying, who can hear it? When Yahushua knew it himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said, do this offend you? You understand? That's what he had to ask him. Are you offended by what I had to say? That you were going to have to eat me and drink me in order to live. Does this offend you? See, as many people, they offend. They had to, they had to, see, you got to understand something, right? When you telling somebody that they got to drink the Ruach or Elohim and eat of his word, that offends them. Everybody ain't a Christian. Everybody don't live by that. They offended. I'm not offended. And I ain't offended to look a nigga in the face and tell him, man, this is what it is. This is what it is. There is no other way. Oh, religion, man-made. Ain't nobody, ain't no man-made this, cuz. So you have to understand, like I told y'all a couple weeks ago, 99% of people who don't deal with the word, like actually deal with it, don't even know what it actually says. So you, So you know they don't understand it. Because they don't even know what's actually in there. They regurgitate the same talking points that people regurgitate of why they don't agree with the word. See, you already have, see, you're supposed to be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. So you're supposed to have enough skill to know that these people don't even know what it actually says. And you know they lack understanding. So your approach is supposed to be drast drastically different because I already know that you speak what you know not. So you're going to speak in error every time you speak on this text. Do you know what I'm saying? And that group I'm in, in the Lapeep group, I be, I, it's certain stuff I done said it about the word and people don't say nothing back. God done told the people, y'all people talking about a book you don't even understand. You don't even know what it says. So you can't talk on it. Keep your mouth closed. Do you know what I'm talking about? No, they love to mention Kevin Sam. I say, boy, I tell him the same. Bro, you can't talk on this because you don't understand it. See, this is what happens. Niggas have a little bit of understanding on a few matters, and they feel like they have a great, strong grasp of the text. Then when you take most of Bruce who in the word, well, I'll tell you straight up and down, it's about 99% of Bruce don't understand it. And 99% of Christians don't understand it because as I told you the other day, people are not learning the word to know Yahuwah. When you're learning to know Yahuwah, you will get understanding. If you're not learning to know Yahuwah, you're not going to get, why would he give you that? Understanding is the key to life. When you get understanding, you have life. He's not going to give you that if you're, how can you get understanding if you're not seeking to know the person to understand them? That's why most people fall fall flat in dealing with people because you don't actually get to know them. So you're not going to get understanding. 
Understanding is insight. When you get to know someone, they begin to give you insight on who they are, what they're about, and why they operate the way that they operate and the way that they think the way that they think. This is why so many people press you to go to therapy for. But see, this is what has happened in this society. Now that I've noticed more recently, it's more and more commonplace to tell people to go. Niggas telling niggas that everybody should go to therapy. Everybody should not. Or they'll tell you that the word is no replace. Uh... And that is a true story. Everyone will not be blessed with an ear to, to ear to understand. Praise you, Lord. That is facts. And he said so. You know what I'm saying? But the reason why they push people into that is because they want you to be mentally handicapped or you walking around as if you had some type of trauma and perpetually being a victim. When most people are not victims in their life, most people just didn't get the outcomes they desired because either their parents were not sufficiently uh, prepared to be able to give to somebody the things that they really desire or you just a selfish bastard who felt like the whole world was supposed to revolve around what you wanted when you wanted it so because you didn't get what you wanted or you didn't get to feel included in adult decisions that that's trauma and this is a sickening this is a sickening world that we live in on a multitude of fronts you know what I'm talking about that's why you have so many wet and soft men out here and so many rebellious and stubborn and disrespectful women. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not, it's just not inherently in the nature of people just to be this evil. This man said he made man upright. Man seeks out different inventions. You know what I'm saying? And when you give people the license to think and move, like I told y'all before, because I just seen the dude who's supposed to be this, whatever he, he owned. And post Toby and his wife and talking about this is goals. That's sad that you got grown people that you want to emulate your life off of an image. You don't know these people. You know what I'm saying? And that's not to say that the image that they portray is inauthentic. You know what I'm saying? That's not to say that it's the case, but you don't know these people. And that's the sadness of the world that we live in because we're trying to emulate sinners. But nobody wants to emulate their maker. Because when you emulate your maker, he, you are going to offend people. And you have to understand this, blessed be you, if you are not offended because you seek to emulate your maker. I do not understand why people believe that if you in the word that everybody's going to accept you and the word explicitly says opposite. It explicitly says opposite. Contrary to popular belief, I've told you this on numerous occasions, you should know this from reading. These people did not accept this man when he was in the flesh. Don't let these niggas lie to you and think he had a band of men who was riding with him because he didn't. Because he didn't. Because if he did, then people wouldn't have stood out there and said, crucify him, crucify him, and let his blood be on multiple generations after us. They wouldn't have said that. They wouldn't have said that if it was so many people riding with him that after his resurrection, when they knew the 12 men who walked with him was standing out there, they more than 3000 people would have got baptized. If so many people believed on what this man was doing, they wouldn't have said you intend to bring this man blood on us. Stop teaching in his name. They wouldn't have been persecuting people for preaching in his name. You lying to yourself. You're romanticizing something that is not reality because you are living delusionally like the women that you say you do not like when it comes to the Lord. You want people to see him as you see him. They do not. They do not see Yahusha as someone to admire. They do not see him as someone to emulate. They do not respect his word. They have no desire to follow his word, nor do they trust his word, nor will they lay their life down for it. They despise him, they despise his words, they despise his instructions, and they feel like his promises are utter fairy tales. This is why we try to use other elements to try to persuade people to follow him, and you're failing miserably because it don't work. If they're not going to follow this man as it's written, they're not going to follow anything extra that you put onto it. They're not going to do it. But y'all going to find out soon enough that these people hate this man. They hate him. If you can't see right now 2021 and quote unquote December and, uh, 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 and, and this calendar that we use, that these people hate and despise this man, you ain't never going to see it. 
And that means your name ain't written in the book of life. I'm sad to tell you. Because ain't no way your way ain't written in the book of life and you don't understand. This man say, if they hated me, they're going to hate you too. He say, don't be offended. The world hate me. He said, because I testify of it, I bear witness to the evil. You supposed to remember that when you sat back and seen Genesis chapter six, when this man said the whole earth was corrupt and corrupted the way of you who were before him. That man bearing witness that y'all deeds are evil. Do you know what I'm saying? There is no way in the world that you're going to be able to stand for the lamb and not talk about these people. These, these niggas is getting their penis cut off and turned into vaginas. You got men with men, women with women, men with little boys. You know what I'm talking about? It's cool to be a whore, and I ain't talking about just with no man. Because you know the society that we live in. They try to make it like the man, this, that, that. The, these women out here slutting. And it's cool. I literally just seen a woman who gave birth not even two weeks ago, and this whore already talking about she back on OnlyFans, man. You know what I'm talking about? That's the world we live in. And that's only in America. We ain't even talking about the places where idolatry is commonplace. That that's how they live, by worshiping nothing. We're not even talking about what's going on over there. Man, look him. Come on, man. This junk ain't, this junk ain't no game, man. I'm going to read 6 and 61 more, one more time for the one more time. When Yahushua shot knowing himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said, do this offend you? What and if you, he said, and if you shall see the son of man ascend up where he was before. It is the Ruach that make a lie. The flesh profit nothing. The words that I speak unto you are Ruach and are life. See, these people don't believe that. But there are some of you that believe not. For Yahushua knew from the beginning who, it were, who they were that believed not and who should betray him. Notice that there's a separation. He knew who was going to betray him. He knew who didn't believe. And he said, therefore, I said unto you that no man could come unto me except it were given unto him by my Abba. From that, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. They were offended. And they weren't offended because he said, there's some of you that believe not. They were offended that they had to live by him. And they had to live by every word that proceed out the mouth of Elohim. Do man live? That offended them. Come on back to Jeremiah, man. Oh, I was in Matthew 11. That's my bad. I was in Matthew 11. That's my bad. Oh, she said this wasn't the one right here, uh, Dagger. She said the one she was talking about, this a blend. She was like, straight cranberry juice is disgusting. I didn't even know they sold straight cranberry juice. Anyway. Oh. I ain't never seen it. That simply ain't straight cranberry juice. There you go. Matthew 11, praise you who are brother Reynolds. Matthew 11 and 6. And Baruch is whosoever shall not be offended in me. And as they departed, Yahushua shall begin to say unto the multitudes concerning John, what went you out in the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind. But what went you for out to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that wear soft are in king's houses. But when you went out to see a prophet, yea, I say unto you more than a prophet. For this is of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, which shall prepare your way before you. Truly I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there I have not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of Shamahim is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of Shamahim suffer violence, and the violent take it by force. So this is where you get this in in Jeremiah 49, that his seed is spoiled or dealt with violently. Dealt with violently. And of course, you can go to and she meant to make war with the remnant of her seed that had the faith of Yahushua and kept the commandments of Elohim. Because see, I, like, I just like to read Isaiah 59 and 20. So come on around here for it. From the minute that you will allow me to understand what it meant, it's always in the front of my brain. Isaiah 59 and 20. You know, let you who would be esteemed, man. You know what I'm talking about? 
Like you don't really understand that. Like when you seek to just know you who are, you'll get understanding. See, a lot of people get frustrated. Why I ain't getting understanding? Why ain't I getting understanding? See, the one of the first things you have to look at, if you're not getting the outcome that you desire, you need to assess what it is that you're doing first. That's the first thing you need to do. You know what I'm saying? I don't care what it is. You know what I'm talking about? I don't care what you got going on, what you're involved with. If you're not getting the outcome that you desire, you need to assess what am I doing that could possibly be hindering me getting the outcome that I desire. Because 99.9% .9 of the time, when we're not getting the outcome that we desire, it's because we're doing something improperly that is hindering that, that being, being able to be done. That doesn't mean that you're just some horrible idiot or a stupid person. That just means that you're going about something in a way that is not going to get you what you desire. And sometimes it's just as simple as you not realizing that you're not going about it the way that you should. And sometimes you just don't know what you don't know. See, it was something I was listening to Gary Vee while we was out here today, man. If some of y'all don't know who he is, it's not important. But he was talking about something serious, and I didn't heard him say this before. And he was talking about, we live in a society now where everyone is being told to be an entrepreneur. You see it everywhere. And it's something that he mentioned, and I agree with it wholeheartedly, is don't focus on what you're not good at, but focus on what you are good at. Focus where you're strong at. See, most people mess up at is you focus on what you're not good at. See, why would you focus on what you're not good at? You already know you're not good at it. Focus on what you do well, you'll have success. You know what I'm talking about? See, I've been telling, telling my wife this uh, last night. Like me, I know my limitations. I know what I'm not good at. So what I would do is I'm going to hire someone or get in business with someone who is better than me in that area. See, my pride and my ego will not get in the way of of, of dealing with someone who is better in an area that I am because we can go further. But see, this is something that a, a white businessman told me when I was in middle school because I told you this before. They used to have those business mentors come when we were at Landon. And he told me that. You hire people smarter than you. You partner with people smarter than you. You know what I'm saying? Most people won't do And I've told y'all this before. This ain't like I never told you this before. You know what I'm saying? That's what most people don't do. Because you have to know your limitations. You have to know what you're good at and what you're not. And don't try to get better at what you're not good at. Just focus on what you do well and just link up with people who are better than you in that area and everybody wins. See, that's how a community is built. See, these brothers were talking about this the other day. See, you don't have a structure anymore. You don't have a person that they do this and they do that and they do this and they do that. Everybody's following their dreams and moving on whims and this, that, there, and the third. So you don't have a collective of people. I See, this as a father, that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to look at this is why he slot people. Is everybody an apostle? Is everybody a prophet? Are everybody do miracles? He slots people where he slots them at. That doesn't necessarily mean that this person is stronger here or stronger there. I'm just using that as a reference point for the, with the word. You understand? You got to know what you're good at and just do what you're good at and you'll have success. But he was just talking about, you know, now everybody wants us to get, because he was talking about in the reality, which we know that in 2021, this is the easiest time in the history of business in the United States of America that you can get money given to you to, to, to facilitate a business. It's all a matter of crowdfunding. It's all a matter of private lenders. You can get millions of dollars from total strangers. I ain't talking about no GoFundMe either. You know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about literal people who will fund an idea so that people can do this here, right? And you and what he was talking about, his son, I think I mentioned all this before that he said, is that what his worry is, is when the economy hits its next correction and many people take major L's, the depression and suicide and drug addiction that's going to come from that because everybody is telling everybody to be an entrepreneur. He said that troubles him because he's looking at it in this regard, that entrepreneurism is a talent. No different than somebody who plays sports and everybody doesn't have that talent. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and we tell people, hey, man, you need to do this. You need to do that. I haven't told you. I don't have conversations with many dudes about that, man. I don't told a few women like everybody not cut for that life. Everybody's not cut for that life. That's a different type of life. 
because it's a different type of mentality that comes along with it. And I'm using that as a parallel with this word because every brew is telling every black person they see you, the children of Israel, you need to do this here. And boy, everybody ain't cut for it. Everybody's not cut for it because they're not going to understand the sacrifices and the labor and the pain and everything that comes along with that in order to get success. And then what he was talking about is measuring success. See, every nigga who get in and who say they want to be an entrepreneur, they all want to be millionaires so they can post Instagram photos flossing on a jet and all this other stuff that these cornball niggas got going on when you got some person who just like to sell jelly and they make $200,000 a year selling jelly. And they can live a comfortable lifestyle to that. That's successful. That is not promoted. Do you know what I'm saying? That's not promoted. This person is making their quarter million dollars a year and they're content and they're living a nice, comfortable lifestyle. Everybody's saying you need to make more. I want more. I want more. And that junk is not sustainable in reality because people are not achieving that. So therefore, people think that they're horrible, miserable failures. And that's what causes suicide. That's what causes drunkenness. That's what breaks up homes. So then you're coming to people and you're telling them, you're a Hebrew, you need to embrace your culture and all this type of stuff. But you ain't telling them everything that come along with actually following the lamb because you're trying to win it with something that ain't got nothing to do with Yahuwah. So then when they actually get in there and they got to face that persecution and that tribulation and by and by they become offended, then you shocked that why these people disrespecting this man's name or these people spiral into some type of depression or begin to de develop or, or return back to such negative habits and behaviors because you brought them in the wrong way. You sold them an image of something without understanding the reality of what you actually being involved with. Because even with the text, you have to be introspective and look at where you're weak at faith-wise or with your flesh. But I always, man, I, 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 I like to say you can always work on your weaknesses, but I would most definitely tell you, man, focus on what you do good. Because I've noticed in my time of living, this is not no fact or no scientific experiment that when the, I've always noticed that when individuals focus on what they don't do well, they don't seem to find a way to have some success. It causes them to be mired in a state of anxiety and depression and doubt and low self-esteem because they can't get their minds off what they don't do well. You know what I'm saying? Your mind should be always be focused on what you do well, because when you focus on what you do well, then you can be able to see what you don't do well and how you can correct it because you've had so much success on what it is that you're doing well. So when you identify something that you don't do well, it's not going to bother you as much because you have such a long string of successes that you can look at it and say, ah, I see I'm not doing this pretty well and I can see what it is where I'm making that mistake and you can course correct. You know what I'm saying? We make life a lot more difficult than we need to make it is because we are trying to live vicariously through things that we ought not shoot to live through other than you But let's continue in Isaiah 59 and 20. And the Redeemer shall come to Zion and under them that turn from transgression and Jacob saith you As for me, this is my covenant with them saith you My Ruach that is upon you and my words which I've put in your mouth shall not depart out of your mouth. Nor out of the mouth of your seed, nor out of the mouth of your seed, seed, say if you are from henceforth and forever. Let's go ahead and read Revelation 12 anyway, because he said out of your seed and that word ain't going to depart. That's why he's going to go to make war with the remnant of her seed, because that word not going to depart from your mouth. And that's going to offend people. See, they tell you, and the reason why I'm using this as the, the entrepreneurism and the word as, as the as the balance or, or the juxtaposition one to another, because these people are telling you that you're going to be persecuted for being an Israelite. And this book telling you you're going to be persecuted because the words that you stand on offends people. So when you get somebody and you bring them to that and then when they get in it and they experience something different. That's where the depression and, and, and the blasphemy and all that other stuff. That's where it come from. 12 and uh, 13, if you would, Book of Revelation. Now, if a nigga get the word straight off the block, 100% pure Colombian cocaine. George, I can't feel my face cocaine. Then shoot, man, this, that, that thing just wasn't for him. See, them people who walked away from the Lord, that thing wasn't for him. That was too strong. They said, I can't snort that. See, I'm going to put it to you this way. 
the word that these boys out here putting out here, man, it's like what these my homeboy them say these boys out here doing in the street, man, lacing everything with fit and all. You causing people OD on bad work. Because they said they out here putting fit and all in everything. And they said they putting fit and all in crack, fit and all in flocker, flint and all in, in weed. I'm like, what are you doing that for? You losing money. This don't even make sense. I told that nigga, I said, boy, I'm glad I don't get out. You know what I'm talking about? I don't want to smoke nothing. I don't want to do nothing. I'm glad I don't do nothing. Because, boy, these niggas don't care about nobody. And that's the same token with a lot of these boys with that bad dope they selling. They don't care nothing. They selling you fitting all lace reefer. You don't even know it. You don't even know it. Niggas, see, nigga, I'm talking about, when we were just, you know what I'm talking about? Niggas used to put doggone comic with the coat. You know what I'm talking about? To stretch it out. That was bad. You talking about fitting all. Man, y'all don't even know, boy. You take that fitting all, boy, you good as dead, man. Good as dead. Revelation 12, man, verse 13. And when the serpent saw that he was cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man. And the woman, and to the woman were given two wings of a great evil that she might fly into the wilderness into her place where she is nursed for a time, a times and a half a time from the face of the serpent. The serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. Y'all know what that flood is. That man, that's people. That's an army of people with unrighteous indignation. And the earth helped the woman and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the serpent cast out of his mouth. And the serpent was wroth with the woman and meant to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of Elohim and have the testimony of Yahushua HaMashiach. Well, I'm trying to tell you. They say, notice that the remnant of a seed, you're going to have to come to him. You're going to have to, uh, what they said, turn from him, uh, tra that transgression. Let me get it again, because I ain't saying it right. You heard that man said, the Redeemer going to come to Zion to all them that turn from transgression in Jacob. Come on back to Jeremiah 49, man. These niggas playing games out here, man. These niggas playing games out here, man. Verse 11, and prayerfully, verse 10 has been made a little bit clearer for you. Leave your fatherless sons, I will preserve alive. Let your widows trust in me. Uh oh. He said, Leave your fatherless sons. Now, this one here say fatherless children. It's a different word right here, right? It's your thorn. That is a bereaved person, a fatherless child, an orphan. Yah, ta, u, and mean. Your thumb. That's what you got right there for fatherless child and orphan. So you have to understand something. Father's children being preserved alive. Can you can you reference that gospel wise? Can you link it up? Do you have a chain of precepts gospel wise to bring forth understanding of when he says, leave your your orphans, your your thumb, and I will preserve alive? I'll tell you what preserve alive is. Alive preserved. Preserve them alive is just one word. It's kaya. Y'all know what that is. That's to have life. So leave your orphans. I will give them life and let your widows trust in me. Trust, of course, you know, is patak. Do any of you have any precepts to string together to bring forth understanding? Now, that's why I'm prefacing by saying bring forth understanding, not to answer the question, but to bring forth understanding. What were you doing? And why were you doing it? Oh, you was doing a muffin dance? Oh. That Doc McMuffin Matt dance? Where did you learn such a thing? <clears throat> Where did you learn such a thing? I think I like the intense better. They say this is what you're supposed to wear at the office. Muffin, come get them headphones off the floor. Y'all ain't got no uh y'all ain't got no precepts you can string together to bring forth no understanding. I didn't even notice that that said product on the back. I 
I guess not. We're at 54.30. I'll give you another minute. Ah, yeah. It's similar, yeah, just, just a tad bit different. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, no, 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 not at all. Not at all. Fatherless uh, uh, orphan in this regard is that uh, your father is literally dead. That's why I said orphan. So when you see your thumb or a fatherless child or he talking about in the law when they say, you know, do good to the to the fatherless and the widows, that is literally talking about someone whose father is dead. I understand why you would look at that you leaving your father's house and cleaving to your uh, spouse, but not in this regard. Literally, you are an orphan. So he's saying that literal orphans will be preserved alive or literal orphans will have life. So it's going to say, it literally says, your thong, kaya, that's what it say. Well, the leave is right before it. So let me get you that. Azab. So leave, forsake, depart, leave behind, forsake and deserted. Also to restore and repair. So he can restore or he's going to leave behind orphans and give them life. I will allow some of that, sir. I will allow some of that. But the first thing that you have to ascertain is when they became fatherless. Now, they, did, they didn't become fatherless after his resurrection. And he just stated they became fatherless upon his death. So we need to establish where it even says that he would be their father. So we're going to go to Isaiah 9 just because. Because we just have to establish that it says that he's going to be their father. You know, it's funny, too, and I should have told the brother this. And y'all already know this when we discussed the fact of Yahuwah being Yahusha. Uh, when the brother was like, I just can't get past uh, the son marrying the father's wife. And y'all know that Isaiah 54, right? Jeremiah 3 tell you the same thing. That it tell you that Yahuwah is married to Yasharal. But this is the key component. I know we discussed that when we discussed this matter. You should always remember that for Romans chapter 7. Romans 7 says that if you be married uh, and your husband be still alive, you are an adulteress. But if your husband be dead, you can be married unto another. Is that not what it says in Romans chapter 7? And he says in that you can be married again to Mashiach because he died and rose from the dead. So that is another inkling of understanding that Yahusha is Yahuwah. You know what I'm talking about? Because if he was your husband from the jump street and he died, that means you're marrying the same person because you can't say that Yahusha was, there's no, there's no thing that you could jump in in the gospels and say, oh, he was married to them. He was already married to him. He was married when he came because he was doing what Jose was told to do, to go marry a whore. See, we have talked all about this before. I'm just referencing this now. Because now you're going to see this in the beginning that this man is your father. I don't even understand why this is such a difficult... Well, I do understand. And not even from the aspect of if you who are not giving them an understanding. But that people overthink stuff. You know, when you overthink stuff, you know that's really just your own anxiety. Because you just don't want to look at something for what it is and then execute. So you just sit back and use the excuse of thinking out a million and one different scenarios or how something can go. Because then you don't have to make a decision and have to actually have to do something. And that's why most people overthink matters and ruin them. You know what I'm talking about? Because you're anxious and you don't really want to make a decision in regards that you're going to have to make a move. Because too many people are scared to fail. You know what I'm talking about? Now, I've told you this before. You can fail at anything in life. You just can't fail at the word. Failure is not a big deal. It's not the end of the world. You know what I'm talking about? Just sit back at it. You learn from what you did. That's why, see, you know, we was already told this here, man, big bucks, no whammies, man. You know what I'm saying? No balls, no glory. You had to take a risk. You can't all, it's like this here, right? That's why a lot of people don't want to come to the word. Like even when you got a lot of dudes who be talking about, well, you know, getting married and all this other stuff, man, everything you do in life is a risk. There's only one thing guaranteed in life. And that serving, if you serve Yahuwah, you'll get everlasting life. Most people in the world look at serving Yahuwah as a risk. 
but it, there's no risk. That's why people say, well, if I'm wrong, then nothing happens. See, that's a nigga who don't believe. Because it ain't no if I'm wrong. And it ain't no wrong. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not taking a risk. You mean to tell me to forsake unrighteousness is taking a risk? I'm not, I'm not, that's not a risk. Most people in life don't get the things that they desire because they're not willing to take a risk. All you got to do is take a risk to forsake the world to, to serve in heaven. And most people don't want to take that risk. They don't want to take that risk because they don't want to lose their lusts and they don't want to lose their friends and they don't want to lose their family and they don't want to be ostracized from society. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For unto us is a son born and unto us is a son given. The government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty Elohim, the Everlasting Abba, the Prince of Shalom. So now we have to look at, of course, and there did mention that. Now when he's crucified, this man becomes, his sons become fatherless. He has fatherless children. They have become orphans. They have no father. But he gave them life. John chapter 20 for when he gave his son's life. And of course, you could read Luke chapter two with the prophetess Anna that the widows trusted in him. Or you could sit back and turn around. And, and matter of fact, and Yasharal is the widow and she trusted in him. But let's continue. John chapter 20. More specifically, Yasharal. And that's your Luke 21. And we trusted that it was he that would redeem Yasharal because she was a widow. Because the thing that you should recall is Ezekiel 44, that it says that she can marry another priest, uh, marry another one who had been uh, who had been married to a priest before because she could be a widow. I get all that for you. I am out of what I'll make you guess it and try to remember it and recycle it. Why do that? John chapter 20. We'll keep it quick. John 20 and 20. Man, I think that nigga Drew Page done been hacked, man. That nigga been sending messages all over the place. Boy, I know that nigga Drew don't do that. Especially not sending no haze with two wives. That's gay. Yeah, that boy been hacked, hacked, hacked. That's ugly. John 20 and 20. And he said, and he had so said, and he showed unto them, his, unto them hands and his side. Then when the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord, then Yahusha, then said Yahusha to them again, Shalom be unto you. As Abba have sent me, even so I send you. And when he said this, he breathed on and said unto them, receive you the Ruach HaKadosh. At that moment, he had given his fatherless sons life or his orphans. Because for that time period, they were orphans. Let's go to Luke 21 and 24 real quick. Like, we're we going to make, make it swift, make it quick. Make it swift, make it quick. Oh, that's not it. I'm sorry. I said Luke 21 several times, and that's completely incorrect. This is Luke 24 and 13. You can make it 24 and 11. Luke 24 and 11. And their words seemed to them as idle tales. They believed them not. Then arose Peter and ran to the sepulchre, stooping down, beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves and departed, wondering himself at that which was come to pass. And behold, two of them went the same day to a village called Emmaus, which from Jerusalem, three score, three score furlongs. They talked together all of these things which had happened, and it came to pass that while they communed and reasoned, Yahushua himself drew near and went with them. Their eyes were holding that they should not know him. And he said unto them, what manner of communications these that you have one to another? As you walk and are sad. And one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering and said unto him, Are you only a stranger, Jerusalem? And have you not known the things which have come to pass here in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Yahushua Nazareth, which was a prophet mighty indeed, in word before Elohim and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been he which had redeemed Yasharal. Besides all this, today is the third day since these things were done. This is the widow that trusted in him. See, let's take another look 
And that is Ezekiel 44, which I mentioned, which is praise you, which is good why I even mentioned the fact of the Romans 7, because it's going to take us into that regard. So let me go ahead and get you Isaiah 54. If I'm going to do it, I might as well do it correctly. Isaiah 54. And then the Isaiah 54 to Ezekiel 44. Isaiah 54 and verse 4. Fear not. For you shall not be ashamed, neither be you confounded, for you shall not be put to shame. For you shall forget the shame of your youth and shall not remember the reproach of your widowhood anymore. For your maker is your husband. Yahuwah of hosts is his name, your redeemer, the Kadash one of Yasharal, the Elohim of the whole earth shall he be called. So you just seen the text said, Yahuwah is your what? That is your husband. That go to Ezekiel 44. From Ezekiel 44 to Romans chapter 7. Ezekiel 44. Verse 20, if you would. Ezekiel 44 and 20. Neither shall they shave their heads, nor suffer their locks to grow long. They shall only pull their heads. Neither shall any priest drink wine when they enter into the inner court. Neither shall they take for their wives a widow, nor he that is put away, nor her that is put away. But they shall take maidens of the seed of the house of Yasharal, or a widow that had a priest before. Notice that it led off and said they couldn't take a widow, but then it said that they could take a widow that had a priest before. Let's turn around and let go to Romans chapter 7. And then we kill two birds with one stone. And you can see clear day that Yahuwah and Yahusha are one and the same. Romans 7 and 1. And also with the point of the widow trusting in him. Because that widow would be those of Yasharal who believe. Romans 7 and 1, know you not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how the law have dominion over a man as long as he live. For the woman who have a husband is bound by the law to husband, so as long as he live. But if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law <coughs> of husband. So then while her, while her husband lives, she be married to another man, <coughs> she shall be called an adulteress. Oh, yeah. What verse three? I'm sorry. Yeah. So then, if while her husband lives, she be married to another, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from the law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Wherefore, my brethren, you also are become dead to the law of the body of Mashiach, that she should be married to another, even to him who was raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit on the Elohim. And letting you know you've been married to the same person. But then when he died, you became a widow who could marry a priest because you had a priest before. You understand? And that is a widow that trusts in him. Come back over here to... Uh, Come on, by to Jeremiah 49. Does that make sense? Do you understand? 49 and 12. Uh, no, no, no. We're not a widow now because you've been married back to him. As I tell you in 2 Corinthians 11, you've been a spouse as a chaste virgin to Mashiach. So you're not a widow anymore. 
See, we were, there, there's a twofold thing about in regards to being a widow. You were made a widow when you were put out of the land. You know what I'm talking about? That's why you say you don't have the reproach of your widowhood anymore. You know what I'm saying? And then you became a widow literally because your husband died. But he had to, you had to become a widow in order to be remarried again. Because since you broke the covenant of marriage, your husband could not, he put you away. So he couldn't take you back because then the land would be defiled. Do you know what I'm saying? And I think we discussed that when we discussed that matter in the, that matter in the past. You know, Deuteronomy 24 tell you, you went and married another God, so he can't take you back. He can't take you back. You can't get, you know what I'm saying? And again, this is not dealing with anywhere in the earth. Just let that be known. Because some people be like, you divorced and you took your wife back ever she been with another man? That, that doesn't pertain to in America. Let me get Deuteronomy 24 for those who don't know. Let me do that. Because I know people don't be knowing. They be like, well, I don't, I don't understand this of what you speak. Deuteronomy 24, verse 1. When a man have taken a wife and married her, and it came to pass that she find a favor in his eyes, but he had found some uncleanliness in her, then let him write her a bill of divorcement and give it in her hand and send her out of his own house. When she is departed out of his house, she may go and be another man's. If the latter husband hate her and write her a bill of divorcement and give it in her hand and send her out of her house, or if her latter husband die, which took her, his wife, her former husband would send her away, may not take her again to be his wife. After that, she is defiled. For that is an abomination before Yahuwah, and you shall cause the land to sin, which Yahuwah, your Elohim, give you for an inheritance. That man can't take you back. He finds that abominable. He finds that to be, he utterly abhors such a thing. You mean to tell me, oh, now your new nigga done died, or he don't want you, and you think you finna go back? Baby, you unclean at this point, because you could have stayed where you was at. You know what I'm talking about? You could have stayed where you was at. See, let's see, but that, that's only in the land. Notice where he said that what you would call the land to fall into sin. So this is something geographically specific. Not America specific, not India specific, not China specific, strictly for the land. Because you can't say you're going to cause America to fall into sin. America was in sin the moment niggas stepped foot on it. And I ain't talking about no white folks. So you have to understand that you just can't take every verse and just apply it to every matter. He said, you'll cause the land to be defiled. You'll cause the land to fall into sin. So guess what? You who will put you away and you went and became another man's and your other man, according to Ezekiel 16, he hated you. He couldn't take you again. This code takes you back to what we discussed in 2 Samuel 14. And he causes, devises another means where his banish can be brought back to him. So he, this is the part of why Yahuwah became a man and died so he could marry his wife again because he could not do it according to the law, which means that you would have been husbandless and therefore you would have perished because contrary to what these people are trying to tell you, even though I know they hate the dudes and the men of spirit telling you, a woman needs a man to get to the end or you're going to perish. That's how that works. I know you got all these modern day trappings. You don't need no man to survive. Yeah, you don't. You absolutely don't. You surely don't. You know what I'm saying? You don't need nothing because I've told you this before. If a woman gets in her mind, she doesn't need a man to survive. She's telling you she don't need you who to survive. That's what she's really telling. She doesn't under, but I'm telling you this. I'm not saying that she's consciously thinking this. She does not understand that subconsciously she has an utter contempt for him. Because if you have an utter contempt for man, you have an utter contempt for he who made man in his image. You ain't got to agree with it, but the book say what it say. Did he not say he made man in his image? Did he not say he gave man dominion and rule over the earth? Did not the woman come out of the man to be a help meet to the man? So if the woman has a despising for the man, she doesn't despise the man. She despises he who created the man. That's no different than he who has a problem with you who speak in the word. He doesn't have a problem with you. He has a problem with the individual who gave you the word. That's how that goes. It doesn't go any other way. You know what I'm saying? We don't have to agree with it. That's not going to change the fact that it's right. And it's not right because I said it's right. It's right because Yahuwah did. Where we at? Where we at? 
I don't even remember. But come on back to Jeremiah 49. You are going to see some cross reference verses in the book of Obadiah and in uh and Jeremiah 49. I can tell you that now because there's a couple of them about to spring up on you right now. Jeremiah 49 and 12. For thus saith you who would behold, they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup and surely have drunken. And, and are you he that shall altogether go unpunished? You shall not go unpunished, but you shall drink of it. Now I know y'all remember what that means. Now, I know it's been a long time, but I know y'all remember what that means. I know y'all remember what that means. I'll let you think on it as I swing back down through these verses that double up. For I have sworn by myself, say if you who that Basra shall become a desolation, a reproach, a waste, a curse, and all the cities thereof shall be a perpetual waste. I've heard a rumor from you who an ambassador that sent unto the heathen, gather you together and come against her, rise up to the battle. For I will make you small among the heathen, and despised among men. Well, you know, verses 14 and 15, we already read that in Obadiah, didn't we? But does anybody, anybody remember what verse, uh, verse 12? Y'all remember? I know y'all got to remember verse 12. I got to put my hat on. These niggas ain't saying nothing. I right, walk in the public, dude say, you had to be a gator. And I'm like, I'm not, though. It's just a hat. It's just a hat. I don't know why people feel like you got to like the team to wear the hat. I don't. It is. It is. It is. It definitely is. Yeah, I remember I had a Florida Gator t-shirt and some Nike basketball shorts back in high school. That jump with me. That t-shirt with me, too. Oh, no, that's not Obadiah 1 and 6 on that one there, brother. Uh, that jump with me. That junk all be about the colors, man. It's the colors, colors. Y'all don't remember what Jeremiah 49 and 12 is? Man, come on, man. Some of y'all were there for it, too. Some of y'all were there for it, too. Matter of fact, because I remember this one. Oh, I take that back. Some of y'all were. It might have, it matter of fact, now that I think about it, the first time we went and cycled through this here, some of y'all wasn't there. I think the only people there would have been Dwight and Muffin, Lee and Glover. That's about it. And my mother. Because I know we did this one here in, in, in Georgia because I ain't getting no new work. When we went out there, I gave them some work we had already put out on the block. They ain't getting no fresh though. Y'all don't remember what Jeremiah? Y'all let me know in the chat that y'all don't remember what Jeremiah 49 and 12 is. I could have sworn some of y'all was there for it, but you know, my memory bad. I would say you would be correct, sir. I would say that you would be correct, sir. Come on to Matthew 26 and 42. It took me a while to find this one here with this because they keep they kept having the one with the F. That's the baseball team, man. We don't want the baseball team. I see what Jeremiah 25 and 29 say right now. But Stanley got it though. That that's uh it's 26 and 42, but I'm gonna check this what Brother Reynolds did put on here with this Jeremiah 25 and 29 and see what it says. Okay, he got on there. I will bring evil on the city, which is called by my name. You shall be utterly, should you be utterly unpunished, you shall not be unpunished. I will call a sword. I can see why you would look at it. That's a tad bit different. But when you see him, when he mentioned that cup, and he said, you'll surely drink from this cup. Who said, I will not drink from this cup? This is Matthew chapter 26. Verse 41 is well, I shall begin. I'll make it 40. Matter of fact, I'll make it 39. Shoot. Matter of fact, they'll make it 36. 26 and 36. Then come Yahoo shot with them into a place called Jessamine and said unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then he said unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful even unto death. Tarry you here and watch with me. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my Abba, if it be possible, 
let this cut pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And he came unto the disciples and found them asleep and said unto Peter, what? You could not watch with me one hour. Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The Ruach indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went again away the second time and prayed, saying, Oh, my Abba, if this cup may not pass away for me, except I drink it, your will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for his eye, their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away and prayed the third time, saying the same words. So when you see that hairy man or the man who's gotten the blessing by being the firstborn, you see that it was his judgment not to drink. He said, will you not go unpunished? You shall go unpunished. You will not go unpunished. You will surely drink of it. Because remember, he took on sin who knew no sin. Him drinking the cup is drinking the cup of his fury. So he has to drink. Edom has said, we're not going to drink. Now, when you sit back and you look at Edom saying he's not going to drink, that's red. That's ruddy. That's the son of Adam. That's man not drinking. That's Yahoo shot not drinking. Boy, all the bots is out. Not, I don't know. Y'all see them bots like that? That'd be the porno sites. No, I mean, I know because they put that junk in there. Like, if I click on the note, because, see, I don't really check. Like, I don't see people be leaving comments, and I be missing them because I don't really be checking that junk. And I don't see people say they don't sign messages, and I don't be checking that junk. You know what I'm talking about? And when I click on the notifications and I see it, it, it and they and, and it would be comments on there, that junk be sex sites. It be bots or whatever that junk be. They, they be. It ain't just on our channel, man. I don't seen that junk on and comments on plenty of channels. You see that junk say var dot tech, yeah, junk junk beat them. Cause see, you got two different ones that say the same thing. Mm -hmm. Like, dang, why how y'all nigga get on YouTube and think a nigga finna get porn? You know what I'm saying? I, I know full well it got to be some manner of virus gonna tear a nigga computer up. I how some niggas say they know nigga been watching porn. Nigga be like, oh my laptop got a virus on it. That nigga been not watching porn. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, when nigga say that nigga say that, how I know you been watching porn. You got on viruses on your dog on thing. We'll be at 49 and 16. See, the terribleness have deceived you in the pride of your heart. O you that dwell in the clefts of the rock, the hole, the height of the hill. You shall make your nest as high as the eagle, and I will bring you down from thence, say if you would. Also, Edom shall be a desolation. Everyone that go by it shall be astonished and shall hiss at the plagues thereof. Now, that was going back to the point where, where I think I missed it. Well, a reproach, a waste, and a curse. Cursed be he that hanging from a tree. You know, he was a reproach because they taunted him by saying, if you be the son of Allah, he can come down from this tree. He saved others. He can't save himself. That also takes you back to Deuteronomy 28, that you will be a reproach and a curse unto everybody who see you. And also in Second Chronicles, when he told you that if you defiled this house, that he would destroy it. It would be a reproach and a proverb to everyone who come across it. And when you got waste, you got Koreb, and that is a dryness, a desolation, a drought utterly brought to waste. And you know that he was wasted. Let's continue. I am in 49 and 17. Edom shall be a desolation. Everyone that go by shall be astonished and shall hiss at the plagues thereof, as in the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighbor thereof, say if you who are, no man shall abide there, neither shall son of man dwell in it. Behold, he shall come up like a lion from the swelling of Jordan against the habitation of the strong. I will suddenly make him run away from her. Who is a chosen man that I may appoint over her? For who is like me and who will appoint me the time? Who is that shepherd that will stand before me? Mm. I know. Look at this here, right? He said, I will. Who is a chosen that I may appoint over her? Who is like me? Who will appoint me the time? Mm, mm, mm. Now, always remember this here for full understanding. Though it is Yahuwah that is manifested in the word, it's the father that's giving Yahuwah the word. So it's the father who's bearing. That's why he say, my father bear witness of me and my witness is in heaven and my record is on high because it is the father speaking through the son. And then the son is speaking to us. So when it was Yahuwah speaking to your forefathers, that was still the son of Elohim speaking the word of his father. And then when Yahuwah became Yahusha, it was still Yahuwah speaking the words of his father. There was no change. There was no difference. He gave Yasharal to his son for his son to wife. That's what kings do. 
But see, we don't have that type of understanding because, again, you are not accustomed to dealing in a situation where you're dealing with people who are of a higher esteem than you. So when you live in America, you think in your mind everybody's equal and nobody should be higher. And this is not the case. You know what I'm saying? And as far as function is concerned, people are higher than you. As far as judgment and justice and equity with you, who is concerned, no man is higher than the other. But when you're talking about function of facilitation of office, well, you a fool if you think ain't no people higher than you. You know what I'm saying? The doggone grape gleaner and, 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 and the vineyard grower is not on the same level as a noble and a governor. You think somebody who was planting grape trees could have stepped to Nehemiah and handled Nehemiah any kind of way? Or felt like that his word was just as vital as Nehemiah's? Absolutely not. Absolutely, Korah proved that. Doesn't matter. Moses was above all them. And guess what? Korah then was princes, but Moses was greater than them. Korah wasn't just no random dude. He was a ruler of a tribe. He was a ruler of a tribe. But Moses had a higher position than him. Aaron had a higher position than him. But he felt like because I'm a ruler over a tribe, I should have equal or greater say than the head of all the tribes. That's not how this works. I done told you that before. There's no group thing. Ain't no, we all list that there in the third. When you catch a nigga saying we all brothers, that's a man who hates to have another man have authority over him in certain matters. See, I done told you this before. When it comes to a man, a man who preaches the word doesn't have an authority over your house and how you run your house. You know what I'm saying? If you want to run your house in a, in, in a, in a highly disciplined and structured fashion, that's your business. If you want to run your house in a highly chaotic fashion, it ain't no sense going against your hood. That's your business. You know what I'm saying? As long as it ain't no transgression going on, that, that ain't that man played to speak on that. Now, he can let you know, hey, I, I don't think that's what you ought to do. But that's your business because he don't have to live in that. But when it comes to matters that pertain to the word, that pertain to all the people, well, ain't no, ain't no group, ain't no voting on that. Ain't no everybody get a say. Ain't no I want to hear your opinion. That's not how that goes. And most of us don't understand that because most of us wasn't raised with no, with no strong male leadership in your house that what I said is what it's going to be. And if you niggas don't like it, there's the door. Do you know what I'm saying? And that offends a lot of people. Like when I tell y'all they were talking about cutting kids off, shoot. Wealthy families cut kids off all the time. Cut them off all the time because this is the rules of the house. And this is what I, this is like this man told you to do. If I pay for your college, well, you ain't taking any type of degree you want to take and I'm paying for it. You could get a degree in these matters right here. If you want to get a degree in anything else, you paying for it. My money's not going to that. You think I'm going to send my son to school and he told my daddy, I want to be a dancer. Will you show up at a dance your way and get you a job to pay for it? Because I'm not paying for that. I'm not paying for that. You know what I'm talking about? Period, point blank. Because if you want my resources and my benefit, then it's my dictation and rules. That's how that goes. That's how that goes. And if you don't like it, there's the door. You know what I'm saying? And don't call me talking about you ain't got nowhere to stay. But see, it's no different. than with the pro If you want to come back and abide by the rules, you can always come back. You can always come back. But you're going to have to abide by these rules, though. You're going to have to abide by the rule because it's my way. There is no other way. It's not, baby, let me ask your mama, see what she say. I don't care what your mama say. She don't like it. She can get out with you. You know what I'm talking about? And now don't call me talking about a daddy. I need this and I need that. You had all that at the house, son. What he told you, he said, everything I had was yours. Now, I can give you your portion, which I had set aside for you. Don't blow it on swine and, and, and horse. Because when you do, you're gonna have to, you're gonna be sleeping among the pigs, nigga. Talking about dang, man. It was plenty of service at my daddy's house. It was plenty of service at my daddy's house. I'm around here sleeping in slop. Let me go on back to the house. But most of us, you ain't accustomed to that. That's a that's a foreign thing. Some of you thinking right now, I could never do my son like that. The hell you say? Shoot, the niggas who work with me, they laugh all the time because they know how I feel. I tell them, shoot, put that nigga out. That nigga want to follow your boy. I told y'all plenty of time. Homeboy be like, man, I ain't doing this. He didn't do that. See, that's your business, boy. My mama feed me, cuz. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stick with what works. Because you niggas out here living on the street, sleeping on niggas' couches and this, that, then, and the third. I don't want to live like that. You niggas stink. 
You know what I'm talking about? Y'all niggas got, I'm, cause niggas ain't bathing properly. You nigga gotta sell drugs and all that. Nigga, this not appealing. Cause you ain't so not to follow some rules. Nigga, you sound dumb. Nigga, you homeless. For nothing. Nah, cuz. That don't even make sense. You know what I'm talking about? I'm telling you real life experiment. I had a couple home bullet, but I'm staying over there because they ain't want to follow no rules. Now I'm good on that. You, but I wasn't mad at them. That's the decision that they made. You know what I'm saying? That's what they felt. You know what I'm talking about? But nah, I'm good on that, bro. You know what I'm saying? But you gotta understand that. So some of you me, you gotta put your foot. Like I said, I be telling y'all this here, man. I tell you, like, boy, ain't no way in the world, man. Churn ain't tearing up my house. Cheering ain't tearing up my stuff because they not going to feel like that they got authority on me and nothing. And absolutely nothing. You don't run nothing. Nothing. I mean nothing. You know what I'm talking about? Well, this is my house and you're going to do what I say in my house or you can leave. I don't care if that nigga's five or 25. You know what I'm talking about? You can leave. I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. I'm not your friend. I'm not here to appease you. I don't give a damn about none of that. This is mine. You know what I'm talking about? And I'm going to direct it as such. It is my job to make sure that you're a healthy, functional, and righteous young man or woman. And boy, you're going to do what I say at my house, and you're going to get your funky behind up out of here tonight. And you ain't taking nothing with you that you ain't paid for. You ain't paid for. I remember talking about you can't take your son's car back. The hell you say? You bought it for him. That's right. I bought it. So if he don't want to do right. I tell you, it ain't your car, nigga. Hell, you talking about nigga? I don't owe you nothing. You know what I'm talking about? My responsibility is to feed you and clothe you. That's why Jacob said, if you keep. That's why Jacob said, if you keep me in this way that I go, and you give me bread and raiment, I'll serve you forever and give you a tenth of what I got. See, most of us ain't got that attitude. This man providing for you, so you don't even appreciate it. Hell, I'm gonna let a nigga provide. I'm gonna provide for a nigga, letting this nigga run roughshod over me in my own house. I'd be a damn fool. I ain't with it. I don't even. I ain't with it. I ain't with it. You know what I'm talking about? I'm not with it. I ain't never been with it. And I ain't just get like to say I wasn't raised that way. Oh no. Cheer and get free reign. Do what they want. Feel like this death. I stick my foot so far up that nigga booty crack, man. I'm talking about it come right out of his throat. He wouldn't even think it's possible. How did your foot come out of my throat by entering into my rectum? I'm talking about that now. I turned that nigga into a whole soccer ball through my heart. Boy, I kicked this nigga all up and down my heart, boy. Because I said what I meant. But but I know where, where it come in at. I told you before. Remember, Deuteronomy is the what? The, re, the repeating. We get frustrated because you feel like you shouldn't have to repeat yourself. And I told her before, you who have to repeat himself to you. So you ain't got enough patience and enough and enough uh, compassion and understanding and slowness to anger to repeat yourself to your own child. Shoot, I feel you there. Shoot, my mama done did that job plenty of time. You know what I'm talking about? Took that job right on back. But it's the point where you got to let them turn no like No. Cause this is what you who let you. I mentioned this here because this is what you who did to you. This is why you ain't in the land. And they're like, no, you ain't finna run in my house and tear it up. Cause I told you, don't you you, you over there sacrificing the molek? You 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 done put this woman away, you done call my land to fall into sin, nigga. You got holes in my walls. You know what I'm talking about? Nigga, you done you done doggone threw up and peed all on my doggone blanket. Nigga, you ain't you ain't two years old, nigga. You're 10. You know what I'm talking about? You jump it all on my furniture. You swinging from a chandelier? So you looking at me like, you see me, daddy? Yeah, I see you, nigga. And look at your mama. Go get my gun. You know what I'm talking about? Because somebody going to the upper room tonight. And it ain't me. You going to after you call? Because you have to do them like that, man. You got to let them know who runs what. You who will let you know who ran it real quick. Like, you went in the land good and long before he sent you over there to the Philistines because you ain't, you ain't act like you ain't had no good sense. He had to let you know who ran it. Now you calling unto him, and what he told you? Don't call me, nigga. Call them gods you had. Let them come save. You. See, when people say that you can't do them kids like that, that's what caused trauma. Get your soft behind out of here with your coward self. You sound like a jackass. I don't care if they appreciate it or not. You know what I'm talking about? That ain't even none of my concern. No, I know what you're saying. I don't care if they appreciate it or not. That ain't even my concern in the moment. My concern is you not finna run me in my house. 
I would hope so. But I don't care if they don't. You know what I'm talking about? That's the hope. But I don't care if you do appreciate it when you get grown. But you're going to understand today, this is my house. You know what I'm talking about? Either way I go. This is my house. And when you step through them doors, you're going to do what I say. And you're going to conduct yourself accordingly. That's why that man say you ought to know how to conduct yourself in decency and order and conduct yourself in the house of Elohim. That's my house. And I'm mentioning all that because that's just the element of most of us did not. See, most of you had your mama and your grandmama and your aunties and they tell you, don't you we don't sit in the living room. But you ain't never had no man come through and say, no, nah, man, this is my house. You know what I'm saying? You can't be the daddy be like, oh, who cares what your mama and them say? Oh, no. Not only do I set the rules, I enforce them too. You know what I'm talking about? Because I meant what I said and I said what I meant. And I ain't got no problem busting you upside your black behind head, boy. Because see, my granddaddy was like that, boy. This is my house, boy. And I said what I meant, boy. You're going to do exactly what I said to do in my house when I said do it, exactly how I said do it, or it's going to be a problem. Do you know what I'm talking about? Grandma would be the one. Don't you beat that baby. Now he said he don't care about none of that. He gonna, that nigga gonna get beat. Because I said, when you get out of that bathtub, that bathtub better be clean so, before you exit the bathroom. Do you know what I'm talking about? And that's exactly what he meant. Everything got to be in order. It's got to be here. Can't nothing be out of place or it's a problem. Why is you running in my house? Do you know what I'm talking about? Why is your hands on my wall? That's what I'm accustomed to. Do you know what I'm saying? Because we were just talking about this here, because, you know, we were talking about it with Bird. Because, see, Bird gets suspended from school, but, see, Bird had the same thought process that I had. You telling me if I get suspended from school, I can go with my dad. That's not a punishment. You know what I'm saying? I get suspended from school, I go to my granddad's house. That's not a punishment. You know what I'm saying? So, therefore, I can do things intentionally because, for me, that is a reward. That's not a punishment. I don't care about being here with these people. You know what I'm saying? I can go hang with him. You know what I'm talking about? But hanging with him, boy, there were rules, though. You're not doing this in my house, boy, and I meant what I said. That's why I'm like that. Now that's why I get that. No, you're not doing that in here, bro. Give a damn about none of that. I wouldn't care if me and Deidre had six kids in here, boy. I wouldn't care if we had 14 in a, in a possible. You know what I'm talking about? Them niggas, all them niggas going to conduct themselves properly in my house, or they're going to get their black behind up out of here, or it's going to be a lot of butt whoopings doled out. You know what I'm talking about? That's as simple as that. And you got to learn them young. See, Yahuwah was learning you young. See, that's why he did, he did you like that when you were born. When you were born was in the wilderness. He was trying to learn you then. You ain't want to listen. He was trying to learn you young. Yeah, that's why y'all be wondering why I be doing them turns like that. My granddaddy was like that, boy. Well, you're not doing that in here, boy. I'm telling you, man, that man made me look at, man, that man made me clean his house. You know what I'm talking about? Feed the dog. I ain't like that damn dog. You know what I'm talking about? And when the dog died, he made me bury the damn dog. I'm like, nigga, that's your dog. This nigga bit me. I don't fool with this nigga. He said, well, Sam dead. Boy, go and bury him. I'm like, bury him, nigga. I'm six. I nigga definitely handed me that shovel and said, you know what to do. You know what I'm talking about? Play with it. I done did stuff. Mom Dukes done took Christmas gifts back. Throw these toys away. All that there. You know what I'm talking about? Because at the end of the day, that's their house. You're not going to do what you want to do in my house. Yeah, I had to get my hand dirty with that damn dog, man. I ain't never cared for the dog too tough anyway. I definitely didn't care for him after he bit me. I'm like, man, the dog bit me, man. I'm not feeding the dog no more. You know what I'm talking about? I ain't fooling with the dog. I ain't petting the dog. I ain't walking the dog. I ain't doing nothing with the dog. It's stanking here anyway. Because we kept him in the garage. You know what I'm talking about? Smelt like dog and dog food. They got hated going in there. Junk always stink. And she ain't talking about she want a dog. Lying to me. I wouldn't care if it was a mud, a smut, a full bread, or nothing. Animals don't belong in the house. They belong in the wild. That's why they're animals. It's all lame. It's all lame. Let me come on back. She getting offended, y'all, because she want to manage your mud. Oh, I just brought it up because it was relevant to the conversation. Genesis 49, 
and 19. Behold, he shall come up like a lion from the swelling of Jordan against the habitation of the strong. This is Isaiah 63. Come on and look at it. Who is this that comes from Edom with dyed garments from Bozrah? This esteemed in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Wherefore, red in your apparel, your garments like him that tread in the wine fat. I've trodden the wine press alone, and the people, and the and of the people, none with me. For I tread them in my anger, trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment, for the day of my vengeance is at hand, and the year of my redeemed is come. And I looked, and none to help, and I wondered, and none was to uphold. Therefore my own arm brought salvation unto me, and my fury it upheld me, and I will tread down the people in my anger and make them drunk in my fury, and I will bring down their strength to the earth. And you can also line that up with Revelation 14, with him coming in the clouds and put you with a sickle in the, because the harvest is ripe. Then when you look at this here, right, who shall make him run away from her? Well, we know who is chosen. Yahusha is chosen. You know who he will, who will appoint me the time. His father will appoint him the time because he said no man know that time but his father. And who is that shepherd that will stand before me? Well, you know that Yahusha is the great shepherd and he sits at the right hand of the father. Nevertheless, let's continue in Jeremiah 49 and 20. Therefore, hear the counsel of Yahuwah, he that taken against Edom in his purposes. He have purposed against the inhabitants of Timon. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitations desolate with them. The earth is moved at the noise of their fall. The cry, the noise thereof was heard in the Red Sea. Behold, he came up and fly as the eagle and spread his wings over Bowles Rock. And at that day shall the heart of the mighty men of Edom be as the heart of woman in her pains. Oh, she shall be terrified. Come over here to Obadiah. Have any of y'all ever even considered that uh, that when you was in the wilderness, that was you who were getting you prime prepped and prepared to how to operate yourself in his house? You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about really sat back and looking at he was trying to really guide you on. This is how I want you to behave in my house. You know what I'm saying? This is this is what we we don't we don't do this in my house. Because remember what he told him. He said, you know, this is what the the Canaanites did. And the, and the land vomited them out. So now, and I'm mentioning this here now because now you desire to not only dwell in his house in Jerusalem, but you desire to dwell in his house, i.e. his son. So the information that we take in is how you want to guide yourself in his house. So I just told little Muffin this here, and, and I probably told you this before, but I sincerely hold to this particular statement of why we just be on a like, keep your room orderly because an orderly room is usually a reflection of orderly mind. When we're talking about orderly mind, we're talking about orderly thoughts. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't heard people say this here when you look at somebody's office space. Now, some, now sometimes they say people who are creatives usually have messy environments because creative people's minds are a little different. You know what I'm saying? At least they say they are, but I, I, I can see that because creative people's minds, boom, you know, stuff pop up in their head, you know, they're scribbling stuff, it's a little different. But you know what I'm talking about? But that's why some people like to go to the military. And you can tell people who've been in the military because they're taught to be orderly all the time because their thoughts have to be orderly because they function in something that causes them to have to be because other people are dependent and relying on them. Therefore, they do not have the luxury of being chaotic in their thought process because it could cause someone else to die. You know what I'm saying? And most of us don't understand that because most of us ain't never been in the service. You know what I'm saying? But when you look at an orderly fashion, meaning orderly thoughts, because if your mind, if your thoughts are chaotic, meaning disorderly, then it's going to be hard for you to function and execute. This is one of the reasons why the text tells you to do things decently and in order. This is one of the reasons why I tell you to purge out the flesh. Do you know what I'm saying? And things like that. You know what I'm talking about? Because when your thoughts are orderly and they're set in a structure and they move, then you can operate smoother. This is what we were talking about a long time ago, about being well thought out. Because, of course, you have, you have to have a difference of being able to pivot, you know what I'm talking about, and being whimsical. See, women are whimsical. They do things based off how they feel. Men have sometimes have to pivot 
I was going this way, a set of circumstances occurred. I have to adjust and go this way on the fly, or as we like to call calling an audible. You know what I'm talking about? But I mean, it's small stuff like this here. And, and again, this is stuff that my granddaddy imparted. You know what I'm talking about? Because there were times as a child, you know, boy, nigga definitely be like, you know, you got stuff thrown all over the place. You know what I'm saying? You ain't really focused about putting your stuff where it need to go. But that's one of the things he like, hey, man, your stuff is in the proper places. That means your mind is in order. Now, he didn't express it like that. But as you state, as you get older, you begin to understand, OK, this is what he meant. Do you know what I'm talking about? Because he definitely didn't say it, son, if your stuff is in order. Your thoughts would be in order. You know what I'm talking about? So then you became accustomed to putting stuff in order. That means your thoughts is in order. It means you're thinking clearly. That means you're going to make clear and rational decisions. Most people who are dealing with the word, their thoughts or their spirit is not in order because they have not disciplined their mind in other areas. So therefore, when they come, you come over here for this word. See, that's what would happen when you were in the wilderness. Your thoughts were still chaotic because you were coming from a chaotic environment. Now, of course, I'm mentioning this here because most some of us come from chaotic environments as far as your upbringing. But you didn't care about none of that when he brought you in this wilderness. I'm coming to instruct you to discipline you to get that out of you. That is the purpose of tribulation. That is the purpose of being tried. It is to purge the disorder from out of you. That's what it's for. That's why he takes you through that, because he already knows that we all come. We got to understand, son, regardless of how you were raised, we were all in sin. So that means we were in a disorderly situation and circumstance. So that means you have to be brought through certain processes to get that out of you. He already knows you're disorderly. I have to instruct chaos out of you. I have to teach that out of you. That's why he say I, I try them to see if they'll keep my instructions or not. That's the purpose of him taking his son. That's why he say, chasten your son while there is hope and spare not for his crying. That's the purpose of that statement. That's why he say, every son must be scourged and everyone who is scourged will be received because that has to be taught out of you. You know what I'm saying? This nigga crazy. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, and we won't be looking at it that way. You know what I'm talking about? That's why he say, no chastening feels good in the moment because if you're being chastised that means that you are disorderly that's all it means that goes back to what i meant before of something that you're not good at and then also are you sitting back assessing yourself on if you're not getting the outcome it's probably something that you're doing that is hindering you from getting the outcome and it's easier to blame someone else or to point over here or to toss it over there you know what I'm saying? Indeed. It's just like basic training. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? I say like some of you who've been in the service, you know. But my granddaddy was in the service. So that's why there's elements of that came out. You know what I'm saying? That you're going to do this and you're going to do that. And you're going to operate like this and you're going to operate like that. That's why that That's why that went down like that. You know what I'm saying? Because he was in the service. So therefore those elements he going to shoot, especially to a boy, he going to shoot that. Do you know what I'm saying? Catch this, catch this, catch this. You know what I'm talking about? So that's where the framework of being disciplined come from. But if you say you were not raised disciplined, then you who is going to raise you to be disciplined? And a lot of times we resist it because you are unaccustomed to discipline. Mm -hmm. So you don't even recognize that he's trying to instruct you on discipline because it seems that you're being inhibited from the things that you want to do. And discipline is not about partaking in the things that you want to do. It is about doing what needs to be done when it needs to be done. And because the outcome is greater than your desire. This is why a lot of families fail because individuals are putting their own desires above the family. Do you know what I'm talking about? Nothing is above the family. No one person is a greater and yes, the father is the head of the family and he's the greatest of them all, but he is not above the family if what he's going to do is going to be a detriment to the family. Everything is about the family. 
the continuity and the success of the family. That is the most important factor. There's nothing greater than the family. No one person is greater than the family. This is what Yahushua taught you. This is why he showed you that I have not come to be served, but I came to serve and to make my life a ransom for many. Because he said, you say I am your Lord and master, and so am I. And I have washed your feet. You ought to wash one another's feet because no one person is greater than the family. The family is the most important thing. You know what I'm saying? That's what most people in this present dispensation of time do not understand. That's male or female. There's no just, oh, that's just on the woman or that's just on the man. That's on all of them. So therefore, the children do not pick up upon that. And that is why you have these quote unquote people say we got to break these generational curses. No, these are not generational curses because we already know what the curses is. Text tell us that this is generational stupidity. Not even stupidity. Let me remove stupidity. This is generational selfishness. That's just what it is. If you have a generation of selfish individuals, then you're going to breed selfish offspring and it will continue because nobody believes that the family is greater than the parts. The family is greater than the parts. Nothing is, and we don't keep that together and that's why you have the disorder. That's why you have that, because nobody's looking at it doesn't matter what I like to do or what I want to do or what makes me happy. How does this benefit the family? And if what I'm doing does not benefit the family, then why in the hell are you doing it? You know what I'm saying? That makes no sense. If you know that what you're doing does not benefit the family, why are you doing it? And if you ask, and if you have to ask yourself why I'm doing it, you already know the answer to it because I'm being selfish. Because I'm being selfish. It's very rarely that you're being ignorant. Most of the time you're being selfish because I believe that my desires are greater than the family. And that's why a lot of people won't be saved because your desires are not greater than the body. You know what I'm saying? And, and we've talked about this before on numerous occasions in numerous different ways throughout the text. It's a body. It's a family. No one person is greater than the family. No one. No one. That's why he said that nobody is greater in the body. That the hand can't do nothing without the feet. And the feet can't do nothing without the shoulder. And the shoulder can't do nothing without the without the doggone traps. And however you want it. Of course, the text don't say all that. But I'm just adding in more body parts. You know what I'm talking about? Everything works together in order because no one part is greater than the body. And we fail to understand that in these days and times. You know what I'm talking about? And that's why we're not getting the success that we desire. Ah, come on, man. We'll start that over that one. You know, just think about that, man. Just things to consider. Because I'm sitting here telling you because my granddaddy put himself above the family. You know what I'm saying? He did that. You know what I'm talking about? So I, I, I had a, a cautionary tale right in front of my face of the detriment of doing such a thing. I ain't just telling you something about just pulling it out of my butthole. I, I seen the detriment of when a man puts himself above the family. It can have a detrimental effect on people. You can't do it. Not if you want to have a lasting legacy. Now, if you don't want to have a lasting legacy, then, then, then that doesn't, doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? That's why Yahoo Shah has a lasting legacy. That's why we're sitting here talking about him right now. You know what I'm talking about? That's why we're talking about him right now. Because if he put himself above the family, because the, and I'm mentioning all this because what did we just read? If it be possible, what? Let the what? Cut path that would, but then he say, but not my will be done, but your will be done. And he's showing you that though I have a desire to exalt myself above the family, I will not do it because it's detrimental to the family. Because I'm gonna have fatherless sons, and they need to be made alive. 
and these widows need to trust in me. So I have to make sure that I put them above me. See, that's the hallmark of leadership. We talked about that before when you're talking about an olive man that's altruistic. That's a man making sacrifices for the benefit of his family. That is the part of being a man, not making sacrifices to further your aims, but to sacrifices that further the aims of the family and not just the generation that you can see, but the generations that you will never see. These are the things, but see, these are the things that we're lost because we, we're no longer taught by strong men. So you don't have that anymore. That's, and I mentioned this here because, you know, DJ was in the car with me. We were listening to it, how these women couldn't understand that when this man was discussing that about how he was raising his daughter to be a wife and how he would pick his daughter's husband and things of this sort. These are not new tropes. This is how the world had been ran for millenniums. Going on dates and all I told you before, that's a new thing. A woman picking her man, that's a new thing. That's not how life has been throughout the course of human history. You going out and deciding what you want to do with your life? No, nigga, you did what your daddy did. If your daddy was a farmer, you was a farmer. If your daddy was a carpenter, you was a carpenter. And you were raised to be one. And if you didn't want to do what the family did, you were excommunicated. Ain't nobody fooling with you, nigga. Because that means you are a rebel. And you have to sit back and think about that. Do you have a mind of a rebel? That I'm going to do what I want to do instead of what the family do. Mm. See, a lot of people, that's why they walk away from the word. They got the mind of a rebel. That's why he say the redeemer come to Zion to every one of those who turn from rebellion. See, because see, if you're going to come to the lamb, you got to turn from rebellion. See, Esau was a rebel. That's why you who didn't fool with. See, it manifested itself later why he didn't choose him, because Esau was a rebel. See, if you one of them niggas, I don't care what my mom and daddy say, I'm going to do what I nigga. You's a rebel. You don't follow orders. Because you care about more about you than the family. You think you greater than the family. Oh, that's not a recipe for success right there, baby. That's how you take L's. And guess what? When you look at black people, guess what we taking? L's. Big, fat L's. And you mad because you took an L because you rebelled. That's definitely Esau. Esau wanted to kill his brother because he rebelled and took an L. Satan wanted to kill the saints because he rebelled and taken an L. The beast wanted to kill everybody because he rebelled and he know he's taking an L. All those who hate the righteous want to kill you because they rebelled and they know that, and that goes back to not being offended in him. Because all these people are rebelling and they taking L's and they mad at you because you not rebelling. You have to sit there and think about that, man. Most people on this earth are rebels. Most people are rebels. They don't want to listen to their daddies, their granddaddies, mamas, nobody. They don't want to listen to nobody. They want to follow their own heart. Well, I'm here to tell you, your heart is stupid. Because the text already tell you, he that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. But what they tell you, follow your heart. No, follow your daddy. I'm talking about your heavenly daddy and your earthly daddy, unless your earthly daddy is an imbecile. Then I wouldn't recommend that. If your daddy's incompetent, and I'm telling you this here because this deals with competency. And if you remember being competent is having the necessary skills for success. And if your father has the skills for success, why wouldn't you listen to him? So you already know your father got the skills for success. You already know Yahoo shot got it. So why you ain't listening to him? Because you ain't got the skills for success, nigga. You know how we know this here? Because you weren't successful till you met the Lord. You weren't successful till you. Everything you did fell flat. Anything you do outside of him falls flat. So that means you don't have the necessary skills for success. You ought to listen to your dad. But see, we don't want to do that because you've been taught to be free. That's why I'm telling you this here, why I be telling you what I'm care. No, you ain't going to be free. Ain't no freedom in here. It's freedom out of the door. Ain't no freedom in here. 
in here, you do what I tell you to do, when I tell you to do, how I tell you to do it. You know what I'm talking about? I ain't finna be yelling and screaming and all that, do none of that, John. You don't do what I told you to do. Because ain't no freedom in here. You know what I'm talking about? All them people talking about free range kids. Nah, white lady, we ain't no free range here. We only want free range chicken. We don't want no free range turn. Only free range chicken. Don't want no free range turn. You ain't, doing, you ain't doing what you want to in here. Ain't no freedom in here. You want freedom, get out. You know what I'm talking about? You got freedom as far as, as the text tell you. You know what I'm talking about? There's freedom in there. Wherever the Ruach of Mashiach is, there is liberty. There's some freedom there. Because you're free from the shackles of death and penalty. See, you're free to live under the confines of my rule. You know what I'm saying? You are free to live under the confines of my rule and you can live comfortably and be rewarded handsomely for being obedient. I'm going to protect, I'm going to give you sleeps, I'm going to give you eats, I'll buy you nice things, you know what I'm talking about? But the minute you want to be free, you can get out. Shoot, go ahead and be free. Fly pelican fly. You can get your ugly behind up out of here, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Don't call your mama either. And if I catch your mama, don't worry, babe. I'll meet you around and get you some yoga. She going with you. She going with you. You know what I'm talking about? Because now she ain't in the bed in the future. She got to go. You know what I'm talking about? She got to go. You already know. She going to get out. You want to bed in the future? Oh, you one of them, huh? Mm, going to the Salvation Army. That's where it's at. We might drop y'all. They got the sauce barker too. They got apartments now. Uh huh? C city rescue. They there for you. You know what I'm saying? Shoot. And I'm just telling you now, if you don't get nowhere to sleep outside now, hold your knife and protect your booty, boy. Don't let them home. Them. I hear it's dangerous out there. You got you to gotta, you gotta gas it up a little bit. They're going to they they take my booty. Yeah, take your snacks, all that. I don't want to go out there, daddy. Well, shoot. You know what you got to do to stay in here. <laughs> Where we at in Book of Obadiah, man? Pick it up at verse 12. I remember being young, but like they said, I'm going to run away. And people are like, well, shoot, nigga, dip. So I know everybody done pulled that trick. You had real nigga parents, they be like, shoot, nigga, go on ahead and leave. Hold on, what you grabbing that for? Now, they don't let you get too far, though, because they know, shoot, nigga, I'm going to go to jail. That nigga going to be dead. You know what I'm saying? But they definitely let you walk out of there long enough to make you think like, because some of y'all done did it, like, dang, they ain't even got me yet. Now, if you were like me, boy, you played it all the way out. You didn't care if they were coming or not. I'm out of here. Mmm. I can say, I'm going to run away in my mind. We know you weren't going to run away. They said, they look out for me too much. They mean though, but I ain't going nowhere. He said, of Obadiah, verse 12. But you should not have looked on the day of your brother and the day that he became a stranger. Neither should you have rejoiced over the sons of Yehuda in the day of their destruction. Neither should you have spoken proudly in the day of his distress. I believe we discussed that one already. You should not have entered into the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. You should have not looked on their affliction in the day of their calamity, nor lay hand on their substance in the day of their calamity. Neither should you have you stood in the crossway to cut off those of his that did escape. And uh, neither should you have delivered up those of his that did remain in the day of distress. For the day of you who is near upon all the heathen as you have done, and it shall be done unto you, your reward shall return upon your own head. For as you have drunk upon my Kadash mountain, so have all the heathen drunk continually. Yea, they shall drink and they shall swallow down and they shall bend as though they had not been. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance and there shall be Kadash and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. Yahoo shall return and to bring you back into the land. Jacob shall be a fire and the house of Joseph a flame and the house of Esau for stubble and they shall kindle them and devour them and there shall not be remaining of the house of Esau for Yahuwah have spoken it. They and uh, the, the south shall possess the Mount Esau. They have the plain, the Philistines, they shall possess the fields of Ephraim, the fields of Samaria and Benjamin shall possess Gilead. And the captivity of the host of the sons of Yasharal, 
that of the Canaanites under Zarephath, the captivity of Jerusalem, which is in Zarephath, shall possess the cities of the south, and Savior shall come upon Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau, and the kingdoms shall be Yahuwah's. So, of course, this is dealing with, of course, Yahusha being that fire and that flame and setting fire unto his enemies, returning to repossess Mount Zion that you might dwell therein. And uh, things of that sort. Let's look at the book of Lamentations because we, we're we about done with Esau in this regard about him being naked, him being exposed. And also that us discussing that, of course, you know, uh, another matter that we've discussed in the past about the man of sin possibly being of the house of Esau. Him having an opportunity to rule in Jerusalem as he desired to rule. And of course, that's why he would tell you about possessing those possessions and things of that sort. And of course, that goes with the daughter of Zion and the daughter of Edom will discover her sins. Because, again, this is a, in the contrast of what are we were talking about in the contrast of the stuff that I'm using, the natural stuff, to tailor that into play. Because Esau was a rebel. Esau did not want to obey. Esau did not want to follow. Esau wanted to do what he wanted to do. And he still wanted the benefit of obedience in the midst of being a rebel. And that's not how that works. So, of course, of course, when we looked at the juxtaposition of the, the witness of Yahusha in the midst of talking about Esau, you see the benefit of being obedient and not rebelling to get the reward. And, of course, of following the structure and rule of a house. Because you're looking at Jacob and Esau and you're looking at two brothers and you're looking at one brother who desired the rule and order of Elohim and another who desired the chaos and confusion of his own desires. And you, you have to you have to you have to juxtapose those things. And I'm mentioning those things because, as, of course, as we delve into more in the book of Jeremiah, you can see that that's what got us into Babylon in the first place, at least the tribe of Judah, because you already know that's what got Israel into Assyria in the first place, is that we wanted to rebel, but still receive the benefits of obedience in the midst of rebellion. And that's why your kings, Zechariah, more specifically, Yechaniah also going against what Yahuwah stated and then thinking that they were going to get the benefit because they were rebels. These were the rebels who led us right into Babylon. Because remember, we're still talking about 14 generations from David to going into Babylon. These men rebelled and led us right into Babylon. Well, I'm talking about, boy, them porno niggas is going hard in the paint. You understand me? But hallelujah for Yahusha and the word. I appreciate y'all time this evening. Prayerfully, it was a level of understanding that was imparted unto everyone. I appreciate y'all time this evening. Bless y'all out the house of Elohim in the name of Yahusha. You who are willing, you know, we're going to crank it up, make it do what it do on tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Did I even have it? Do I even have it? You know what I'm saying? So this way and consider, you know what I mean? Life is life. Things are things. And you know what I'm talking about? Things really flow in the way that they flow. And they mainly flow in the way that they flow. Uh, just because of the way that we move and the way that we operate. And we usually operate in, in, in a fashion that's not beneficial for us. Because we usually operate in ways that work work for us. Amen. Praise you indeed. Uh I say, man, and I, and I, and the main reason I mentioned some of the stuff I mentioned about my granddad, because I want some of y'all to just sit back and just think about uh, the strongest man who had an influence over you in your lifetime. You know what I'm saying? Think about the things that he imparted. You know what I'm saying? Or you can think about the individuals who didn't have... Uh, the greatest positive effect on, on, on your mental state. You know what I'm saying? Or your outlook on life and see how that affected you. Cause you want to look at the men who you encountered in your life and the things that you've learned, whether positive or negative or the things that you didn't learn and how they shape the way that you think and operate now. So that you can be the strongest man that you need to be to be able to submit the legacy that you won't submit it. Because every man can't tell a man what legacy he want. But you want to be able that your name is pristine and clean when it's mentioned in regards to your offspring and what you did as a man and how your offspring represent you. 
Because you don't want nobody looking at you like this here, man. And, 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 and your name ain't good in the street. And not good in the street because you some type of evil dude. But just that your legacy ain't what it should be or what it could be. You understand what I'm saying? But let you who will be esteemed in all things. Uh, you who again, I bless y'all the house of Allahim in the name of Yahushua. You who are willing, man, we'll pick it up on tomorrow. And until that time. <laughs>